multi-platform games. They're everywhere. And in today's video, I'm taking a look at a release in the early 2000s, Defender. Defender was a classic arcade game and in the early 2000s, it was re-released in modern form, a 3D version shooter on the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox. And in today's video, I'm gonna take a look at all three of these versions, compare them as best I can to one another, and give you my thoughts. And so, you know, there's lots of multi-platform games out there, and everybody has their favorite. You know, sometimes we were limited to what console we had growing up or in our home, and now it's kind of cool to go back and reflect upon which version is the best. I've done a few of these on my channel, and I've also done kind of like an overlooked sequels and ports, and I combined those video series into this video, because this is kind of an overlooked sequel and port, and I thought it'd be fun just to look at these and compare them. So let's take a look at this. Here we go. All captured footage shown today was done on real hardware using real copies of games, and to do the best comparison, what I did is I took component video cables for GameCube, Xbox, and PlayStation 2, and ran them through my RetroTINK 5X on the same settings. So I did my best to compare these, and I thought it turned out pretty good. Here we go. The PlayStation 2 version of Defender came out the same day as the Xbox release in North America, October 22nd, 2002. Defender did have a subtitle outside of North America for all mankind, and if you're a fan of games such as Colony Wars, well, this isn't as good as that. I think this is a great game if you like those types of games. Now, this is not Rogue Squadron. This is more kind of Jedi Starfighter, maybe. But, I, you know, premise is simple. You're, you're, you're saving humans from alien invasion, and you're going around blowing up aliens, you're protecting things, you're, you're saving colonists, you're picking them up and dropping them off in various locations. And so there's different strategies you can do by dropping them off because they'll give you various power-ups and health, which is really important because some of the later missions get pretty challenging and you're going to need those health uh, power-ups to, to replenish damage you take with your ship. Uh, you know, uh, this game is about eight hours in length. Uh, it might be give or take a few hours if you if you play it faster, but uh, I enjoyed what I played, and it was nice to go back to this classic. And you know, the PlayStation 2 one looks okay. It's definitely of the three, probably the most dated looking. Next up is the GameCube edition, and what's cool about this is it's actually an affordable game. There's so many GameCube games that are so expensive now. It's nice to know that this decent game is still fairly affordable. There are several nods to the original. I do wish the original was included on the disc, but here's the GameCube one. I think it looks a little bit better than the PlayStation 2. Def definitely color and effects seem to be a little bit enhanced, you know, with that powerful processor the GameCube had versus the PlayStation 2. Uh, you know, I like this version. I played this one the least. I guess there is an additional campaign level that the GameCube version includes that the xbox doesn't and the xbox has a level in which is missing on the gamecube edition and so you also have these cheesy intermissions which kind of remind me of starship troopers i actually like them quite a bit they're a little dated but still kind of fun to go back and play this the whole idea for this video started with me noticing Defender on my shelf and it was a game. I don't remember playing that much and I thought I'd check it out And I'm glad I did so I took it off the shelf and I popped it in my original Xbox and here we go Defender does have some strategy to it. There's several mission campaigns There's one of I do believe six ships that you can choose from each with the ability to uh, Upgrade the weapons. I think there's five or six weapons for each ship that you can unlock and play. And so I really like that. There's there's some diversity to game styles. Uh, you know, some ships are faster, others have more armaments, some are uh, have stronger shields. There's a lot in this game to like. Now, it's not the original. If you're looking for the original, it's it's something on on a different level, but 
I did like what I what I played, and the Xbox One does look the best. I actually really enjoyed how the Xbox One looks, and as you can see here, uh, several things going on. Uh, frame rate stays pretty steady, and you know this is definitely one to check out. Very affordable on all three platforms as well. This is not going to break the bank, and that's nice to see a, a, a game that's above average still affordable, and so. I do recommend checking out this game and you know the Xbox One to me gets the nod I do think it looks the best you know the Xbox was the most powerful of the three consoles and so uh, I think they did a good job with making it for the Xbox and giving it maybe a little extra polish the Xbox version does have a mission that is Missing from the GameCube 1, the Viking 2 site, there also is a Game Boy Advance version, but I covered that in my bad Game Boy Advance games, and it is terrible. Nothing like this. Stick with the console versions. And here is comparing all three. I thought it'd be fun to show them side by side the best I could. Here's the PlayStation 2, the GameCube, and the Xbox, showing the various menus. Here's the ship selection. Um, you know, there's there's just slight differences with each version. You know, definitely the nod for me goes to the Xbox, but you know, you be the judge. You know, it's pretty close. Uh, this was a multi-port. You know, as I, I think they did a good job with all three. You know, there is some hardware limitations, but it was fun to to, to compare them like this. I haven't done many games comparisons such as this so it was kind of cool to go back and, and do this uh, it, it does take a, a, a little bit of know-how to do it I've, I've done a few of these now I've gotten a little bit better at doing so and so uh, there's two different types of like intermissions there's like a movie intermission and then there's like in-game footage and I thought it'd be good to compare to see kind of the textures and the color versus each one you know the GameCube to me looks a little bit more colorful than the PlayStation 2 one but the the Xbox one ran better and so uh, it kind of interesting up here too with this little uh, in-game intermission I, I don't know whatever reason the Xbox one the 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 the, the colonists is like zoomed out and I thought that was an interesting difference you know it's kind of neat when you compare games from one another just the subtle differences that there are and so the ship actually on uh, the the PS2 uh, looks a little bit lighter than the GameCube one. The GameCube one is a little bit darker in color, and uh, I don't know what that's about. But you know, uh, it's just kind of neat to see the differences. And you know, here's a uh, saving the colonist, and uh, here's one of the in-game uh, movies that I was talking about, the the CG uh, scenes, and you know, it definitely reminds me of Starship Troopers for sure, which was popular at the time. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, whatever version that you choose to go with, uh, I think I think there there's going to be subtle differences. But either one, any one of these three that you'd go with, is going to be an excellent choice. And so this is this is a kind of a cool level where you're 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 fending off your base uh, from alien attack, and and uh, there's an escort scene at the end where you have to uh, pick up like a like a tank and take it to the Stargate. Uh, which is kind of crazy. So definitely, definitely, this is you know, kind of ripping off some other science fiction, uh, you know, uh, movies to make its own. But you know, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, you know, it's not real deep. This is just kind of a, a fun, kind of silly shooter where there is some strategy in it, but it mostly go around blowing up stuff with various weapons and ships. But I think there's a lot of fun to be had here, and one I recommend playing. So there you have it. Those are all three versions of Defender released on the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. What is your favorite? Do you remember playing this one back in the day? Do you still play it now? This is not an A game. This is definitely a B-tier game, but it's still fairly affordable, and I know that there's fans out there. Now, one big critique I have of this is, you know, they're coming out with a new Defender. Why not include the arcade game? They had the rights to it. It would have been easy to include the arcade classic on this, and I think it would have appealed to a lot of fans that grew up 
with the original. Now I know there's people that didn't like this version of the game, but I thought it was all right. Actually, um, if I was to pick one version of it, I probably would prefer to play the Xbox One as I thought it looked the best. What do you think? Comment below. Is there other comparisons you want me to do on my channel? What other games were released on all three of those, GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox, that you want me to compare? I would love to hear some feedback and if you're new to the channel, you may want to consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is the immortal John Hancock, and you have a great day.